Hello Hollow Lane Summer Club. So my name's Catherine and I'm the Education Officer here at Slyly Wildlife Park. So in this video we're going to be getting up close and personal to our ringtail lemurs. Um, so in this troop we actually have seven ringtail lemurs and they come from the island of Madagascar. So in the wild um, the troops uh, might range between sort of six lemurs and 25 lemurs um, but as I say we've got seven. Um, their diet consists mainly of fruit and leaves, flowers, herbs, bark and sap. Um, but they uh, actually eat quite a lot of leaves from the tamarid tree. So of course in this country, in the UK, we do not have um, any sort of tamarid trees. So we actually replicate that by giving them these leaf eater pellets. So I've just put some in a bowl for you to see. And um, so these pellets are really important because it just gives them all of the essential vitamins and minerals that they need to, to stay nice and healthy. And then what I've got here is a nice selection of fruit and veg, okay? Um, so what we tend to do with our ringtail lemurs is that um, we feed them twice a day. And so first thing in the morning, we um, give them um, all of their vegetables because it's really important that um, if we just gave them all of the fruits in the morning, then they would eat all of the lovely bananas and all of the oranges and melon, and they would leave um, all of the healthy stuff behind, all of those um, broccoli pieces, cauliflower, um, and all of those important vegetables that they need to be getting to ensure a healthy diet. So what we do um, is we give them their vegetables in the morning and then when they've eaten all of those lovely vegetables, then in the afternoon, um, they get a nice selection of um, different fruits. So you can see in this bowl, we've got some carrots, tomatoes, pineapple, and some pom pomegranate and some banana. Um, so that just gives them a lovely um, selection. Um, so in this enclosure, we also do have um, what we call a smell box up on the side there. So sometimes in that smell box, we might put um, some different herbs in it. Um, we might put uh, maybe a lemon or a lime. And what we're trying to do is just encourage, um, again, just a bit of an enrichment and just to see those natural behaviours that we would be seeing in the wild. Um, so these guys, unlike other lemurs, um, they actually spend about 40% of their time on the ground. And um, actually they don't climb um, the trees as much as you would think. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just enter the enclosure and do a nice scatter feed. And um, hopefully you guys will get up close and personal um, to our lemurs. So let's go inside. Um, so I've also made some toys here for our lemurs um, and these are just like um, you get them for dogs and horses. They're just sort of treat balls and what I've done, if you can see, is that I've just stuffed it with hay and then I've put lots of nice um, yummy banana in there as well. Um, so what we'll do is our scatter feed um, of our fruits and um, then we'll do the enrichment toy as well. So we're just going to go inside now. Well, these lemurs do get under my feet a little bit so they need to be obviously really careful so because they spend about 40 percent of their time on the ground we obviously need to be ensuring that we are putting um, a lot of the veg and the fruits on the ground as well but obviously we need to ensure that we are just scattering it around everywhere to encourage those natural foraging behaviors so we also do hang um, different things from the enclosure. So here we've got a nice um, branch and sometimes we put different herbs and leafy things on there as well. And again, just another enrichment that we would do for our lemurs. So here I'm just going to scatter some of these lovely leaf eater pellets as well. And as I say, it's just really important that they are getting these leaf eater pellets um, to encourage the natural uh, feeding behaviours that we would see from the tamarid tree in the wild in Madagascar. Now, even though these guys have got really long tails, um, you might be surprised to learn that actually they can't hang from the trees with those tails. Um, so, unlike other primates that you might have seen in other zoos that can literally just hang from the trees um, curling their tails around different parts of the branches these guys can't do that but what they can do is point so if in the wild um, say um, there was a big bird of prey or you know a predator 
or um, sort of danger lurking, what these guys will do, and this one is sort of doing uh, a bit of an example for us, is pointing the tail. So if there was danger, what would happen is they would sound out different barks um, and different sounds, but then they point with their tails to um, alert other members of the troop um, to which way um, to go to safety. So I'm just going to continue with the scatter feed. Um, as I say, we do put most of it um, on the ground, but I also do put a few other pieces up high as well. Um, I say we want most of it um, on the floor but we also do want to sort of encourage them to have to find it so here this is uh, where we have hung different herbs and different um, little pieces of plants and things for them and then we've got a lovely hammock as well so we'll just pop that all down so we can see these guys now just enjoying all those lovely different fruits in the wild, they would also eat um, different insects um, and different seeds and berries that they might find as well. So quite a nice mixture. So we're very lucky at the zoo that we've actually been able to have quite a number of different um, babies um, in the park from these guys. Um, actually, um, in zoos and in captivity, they are very um, easy to breed. Um, but in the wild, they are sort of struggling. And unfortunately, um, the numbers have hugely declined. And this is mainly because of um, deforestation and loss of habitat. So um, Madagascar is um, unfortunately an area where we are cutting down so many um, sort of rainforest areas um, for logging and agriculture and um, for paper and so forth that these guys um, are actually in a bit of a decline because they're losing their homes. Unfortunately, um, not only um, do we um, lose a lot of these animals, but we also cut down their resources. So um, they lose their homes, but also all of the trees that are cut down, all of the fruits and vegetables um, and all the leaves that they were eating, they will lose as well. So um, unfortunately, then it becomes a competition um, over food and, and resources and trying to find um, enough food to sort of feed everybody. Um, but this one here, this big one, this is green. Um, green is about 30 years old um, and she is the leader of the group. And she's the boss, she tells everybody what the plan is for the day. Um, and so she is um, our breeding female. So um, only the breeding female um, will successfully have young. And usually it's just one uh, baby um, or twins. So um, last year we were actually very lucky that we had Pebbles. So Pebbles is um, her baby from last year. Um, and the year before we did have twins so we are very lucky here at the park um, that we have successfully been able um, to breed um, which is absolutely amazing um, because uh, hopefully um, it will help uh, save the species in the future um, from extinction and we've got this one up on the log now So um, you can see often um, what our lemurs like to do, you might have seen at different zoos, um, is um, they sort of get into like a meditation pose or what I call meditation pose where they're literally just sort of sat down and they push their tummies out and um, what they're trying to do is actually increase their body uh, temperature because underneath that white chest is like a black panel and that acts a bit like a solar panel. So basically what these guys can do um, is stretch their tummies out and um, what it does is it just helps them sort of warm themselves up uh, quicker. Um, but also um, what they will do um, and what we've seen when we did the tour of the zoo is they um, troop together. Um, so if they are sort of feeling a bit cold um, or if they just want the comfort of one another, what they will do is just um, troop and gather together. Um, so it's just another way that um, these guys will uh, keep themselves safe and warm. 
So they're all scattered around at the moment, just eating various pieces of fruit. This one's got a lovely piece of pom pomegranate. So they'll eat all of the lovely fleshy fruit on the inside, leaving the skins behind. And green, very inquisitive, likes to get up close and personal. Okay, so what I'm going to do um, now is just get those little enrichment toys that I made. And we'll just pop them on the platform and just see what their reaction is to that. Um, what we like to see is them actually using their fingers and their hands to actually get inside um, these balls but I've tried to make it a little bit difficult for them by obviously putting the hay inside um, because we do want them to work for it a little bit so I'm just going to put these on the platform now these guys they're very used to having these because we do like to spoil them quite a bit here at the zoo so already I can see that green's very keen so we'll just put these on the platform now. As you can see her, she knows the banana's in there somewhere. Highly sensitive smile I have. And she knows it's in there. You can see these guys manage to find some very noisy eaters, aren't they? So I'm just going to um, just sort of stay here for a couple of minutes um, and I'm just going to allow you just to um, enjoy our lemurs.
Okay then, so um, I'll leave it there then, Hollow Lane. Um, I understand that it is now time for your lunch. Um, so I hope you've um, enjoyed the videos. Um, any questions, then um, please do um, tell your adult and um, I'm sure that they would be happy to drop me an email and I can answer um, any questions that you might have um, about any of the animals that we've seen today. I hope you've enjoyed the videos. Bye for now.